Hey everybody, Sean Powers here, and today is going to be a very quick video because I have an entire house full of guests for the holidays, and you'll probably hear there's multiple babies in the house. It's insane. Uh, my office actually can see just a little bit of the the chaos. It is just trashed. Uh, if you follow me on uh, Mastodon or Facebook, uh, I took a picture. It's almost, you almost can't walk around. It's so bad because everything was just shoved into my office to make room for people. Anyway, um, I, we did our live stream scavenger hunt the other day, and I utilized a lot of QR codes. Now, I used an online tool to make them, and I regret that because about halfway through making all of the clues, I realized there's an incredible command line tool for making very detailed, very nice QR codes right on the Linux command line. Now, the one thing that it doesn't do is put cool logos in the middle of the QR code. So they are just standard QR codes, but they're super powerful. So I want to show you some of the things that you can do with them. I actually did use the QR encode program for a couple of the tools because I specifically wanted to open like an app. Anyway, I'll show you how it works and I'll show you what I did and why I should have used it for everything. Okay, so here I am on the command line and the program is called QR encode. Uh, so it's probably available in your distribution, basically just uh, app get install or, or DNF install or whatever to get it there. Uh, and then you just do QR and code and then the standard options now by default it will make every little uh, square pixel three pixels by three pixels if you want it a little bit larger than that uh, you can specify that with the dash s for size and i seem to like six pixels right so every little square in the qr code you know it's like a big patterned grid or whatever every square pixel is going to actually be six pixels by six pixels. Um, and it just seems to be a, a better size for me. Now it's kind of a moot point because you can also export the files as vector graphics like SVG. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use PNG, but you can, you can make them vector graphics so they can grow without losing resolution. Uh, so this maybe is a moot point in your case, but anyway, uh, size, uh, six pixels by six pixels for one, each block. And then I didn't realize this either, but QR codes include a certain level of um, redundancy so they can be damaged and still scanned and, and worked out. And so you can do that L and I don't remember what L stands for. Uh, oh, the level of error correction, I think is what it actually stands for. So dash L for level and QR encode has a few. It's like low, medium, quite high and then the highest is high i think q is an odd uh thing to put in there uh i think by default it uses a medium uh, but i like to specify high because like i put a lot of the qr codes on stickers outside in the elements and if they get damaged or like bleed a little depending on how you print them if there's a lot of error uh correction in there like redundancy for example with the dash cap l capital H, it can lose up to 30% of the QR code and still scan. So I like to include that. Uh, plus they're a little more intricate because there's more data to put in there and they just look cooler. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's it. And then basically uh, the file you want output, so dash O, and I'm just going to say um, for our first one, let's do uh, a location. So I'm going to say location dot PNG. That's just what I'm going to call the QR code. And then you specify what you want to actually encode on it. And now for, for a location, like a geolocation where you do latitude and longitude, it has a format where it starts out geo colon. And then uh, in my case, I'm going to do the one that I did for our scavenger hunt, if you were watching, uh, 45.377000, comma, negative 84.957. Nine five seven, and no, I did not remember that. <laughs> that was written in a little notepad just off off screen here. Um, and this will give a precise location. Press Enter. It's going to create that file. And now, say I just created it right in the same folder that we're in. And if you look at it, this has a high level of error correction built in. And if you actually scan your screen right now, uh, even in fact, here let me let me get rid of part of it off the screen. We'll do a little bit of damage control. So. If you scan it, even with that much of it off the screen, you should still get a geocode that will take you to a park in the town that I live in. I mean, it's not taking you to my house. It's just taking you to a public park in the town of Petoskey where I live. And so 
that is a code that points directly to that location. It will open up whatever map app you happen to have on your phone. So it's pretty neat. It, it doesn't specify an application in this case. It specifies that it's a location and then your phone uh, will open up the appropriate app to get to a location. All right. So another thing that you can do is... Um, just a website like if you just want to have it open up to a website that's a pretty common thing and it would be the exact same thing i'm just going to push the up arrow um but instead of location we're going to say um website.png and it's going to create a you know a qr code called website.png and then you would just put the website so http colon uh we'll just do my website seanpowers.com press enter it's going to create this website so now if you scan this, I'll scan it on my phone um, just to make sure it works. SeanPowers.com. And it loaded right up. I could capture my <laughs> my screen with a fancy thing, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to show you that it worked. Uh, so that'll take you to a website. Uh, another actually pretty cool thing, though, and the reason that I tried to do this, the, the online version that I was using... First of all, it was a big nightmare because like the codes are going to expire if I don't sign up. I'm very upset about that. But anyway, um, when you create a, a QR code for like a YouTube video, you can specify. I'll, I'll show you. So let's do QR and code uh, dash S6 again. We can do this something. We can do like S10, right? Okay. And it'll be the, the little cube things will be a little bit bigger. Um dash L, we're going to do uh, Q for quite high, not quite as much redundancy in it. Uh, o, youtube.png. And then instead of doing the link with HTTP or HTTPS, you do YouTube colon slash slash. And then uh, here is actually the video that we used that John Green was so gracious to provide for me. That was the, such a cool thing. I was so excited that I was able to uh, provide that for my kids who are all John Green fans. Uh, anyway, do that. And instead of encoding HTTPS to a website, it will encode to YouTube. Press enter and it's going to create this, this device. Now, the reason that it doesn't look more high res or whatever is because my image application actually stretched it full screen. So it's a little bit larger um, actual file than the earlier ones, but it just full screen, it's going to look the same. So anyway, uh, this does have error correction, but if you scan this, uh, and you should be able to actually scan the screen on the video while we're, while we're playing it, I'm going to do it to make sure that I did it right. And sure enough, open YouTube link. Hello, Powers family. Your next clue is on page 241 of my first book. You would yeah. So anyway, that was uh, the link directly to YouTube. And the reason I want, okay, it's kind of funny. The reason I wanted to do it um, directly to the YouTube app, I didn't want them to have like an ad or whatever. If, if it opened up onto a web page, a YouTube web page, I wanted to make sure that it opened in the YouTube app and started playing with audio because on iPhone, when you open uh, on a web, like when you open YouTube on the web, it doesn't always have audio. You have to like unmute it. And I wanted them to hear them right away playing. So anyway, uh, that's the, that's the deal there. There are a bunch of other things you can do with QR and code, and I am not going to explain them all. I'm going to provide this link to this howtogeek.com article uh, that is really great because it shows you all of the different kinds of codes. Like you can just do um, text. It doesn't work that great on an iPhone. I tried to do it, but it doesn't really show, like it doesn't word wrap, so you can't read a long chunk of text. Um, but yeah, point to a map. You can have a link directly make a phone call. So like you QR code and click in and it'll start dialing the number. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, same thing with a text message. You can send an email directly from a QR code. Uh, open a URL, contact, add an event to your calendar, connect to a Wi-Fi network, which is cool because you can have like your guests come in and say, hey, just take a picture of this with your, uh, you know, with your phone and you should be able to get on my Wi-Fi. That's just super cool. I like that. Um, anyway, that's it. You scroll through, you can make them different colors. Like there's a blue one, all these different things you can do. QR and code, it's free, it's open source, and you don't have to worry about like your links timing out like that stupid online one that I used. I guess I didn't end up being as short as I thought because I got kind of excited talking about QR and code, but it's a lot of fun to make QR codes and you just print them out and, or, you know, have them on a website and people scan them. It's just, I, I don't know. I think QR codes, I know I'm like 
10 years after they were a cool thing, but I think it's cool to make your own custom ones and it's perfect for a scavenger hunt. So anyway, um, have fun with QR and code. I hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday week. Remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. Have a great one and I'll see you in the next video.